Good evening, everybody. Wow. Good evening, everybody. Adequate notice of this meeting, as required by the Open Public Meetings Act, was provided through the posting, mailing, and filing of the annual notice of regularly scheduled meetings of the Town Council on December 11, 2019. The notice was, on that date, posted on the bulletin board in the Municipal Building, provided to the Westfield Leader and the Star-Ledger, and filed with the Clerk of the Town of Westfield. Mrs. Rowley, may I have a roll call? Mayor Brindle? Here. Council members have good? Here. Armily? Here. Lagrippo? Here. Katz? Here. Mackey? Here. Contracts? Here. Dardia? Here. Voice? Here. Please rise for the invocation which will be given by Councilman Mackey and remain standing for the salute. Tonight, in honor of International uh, Women's Day, and because we have uh, the honored privilege of having the uh, Westfield High School basketball team here, I'd like to read a poem by Dipendra uh, Tamana called Resilience. Yes, she's been fractured, broken down, and messed around, taken to the heights and dropped down, but she's picked herself up, put the pieces together again, brushed away the dirt, and emerged stronger. She may have lost a move, but not the game. And now Resilience is her middle name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that, Councilwoman Mackey. Um, I'm first going to invite Jim. Where is Jim? Do I see? Oh, there he is. I'm going to invite Jim to make a few little updates. Pressure, Mayor. A lot of the people here. Uh, a couple, two quick things just to mention. Um, number one, uh, we had a report down the hall before the meeting to, uh, before this meeting tonight, uh, update about uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, we're in good hands with our health officer and, of course, with our police chief um, and uh, being the opera. Uh, Emergency Operations Coordinator. Just want to give an update. I was at a meeting myself today with county officials uh, and all administrators from the county. Um, we all, you know, gave each other elbows instead of handshakes. Uh, it's a good practice to get into. And uh, the mayor, myself, and our health officer will be on calls um, starting tomorrow, every day, seven days a week, getting updates from the county, who's getting updates from the state every single day to inform us, and then we'll be able to inform the public. And I want to just mention to the public that um, in addition to CDC uh, website, uh, we also have our coronavirus uh, um, resource center on our website, which we're trying to update every day or every other day with information about what we're doing, uh, you know, things you can do as you're on, your, on your own with your family and your own home, other items as well, links to other sources as well. So if you have questions about that, um, please go there and get information. And it's going to be an ever-evolving thing uh, every single day. Uh, other important topic, uh, just uh, the census. Um, it's an important thing. This is the month where everyone's going to be getting their census questionnaire. Uh, we want to make sure everyone fills it out. Westfield's always had a very good uh, response on census, but it can never have uh, enough. So again, on our website, we have a census resource center. Uh, I just want to mention what's on there. We have 2020 census at a glance, a summary overview of all the things you need to know about the census for 2020. There's a sample questionnaire, so when you get your question in the mail, you can go to our website, look at it first, see how you want to respond, and your questionnaire will be coming in the mail very shortly. Um, census 101, refresher of what census 2020 is. Um, uh, safety and security for census, um, FAQs, um, census takers in your neighborhood, a list of people that might be coming around uh, to your door, uh, important dates for the census, due dates, questionnaires, times, and of course household survey information. So again, very, very important um, that everyone uh, fills out their census document. Again, census is used for making sure that uh, population centers get proper funding, uh, and we want to make sure we get all the funding we need <laughs> and get uh, for Westfield and of course our county. So. Uh, important factor and everyone here whether you're in Westfield or not will be getting a census uh, questionnaire in the next few weeks so that's it thank you Jim. Uh, just a few brief comments before we get to the fun of the evening that's why so many of you are here I'm sure but uh, uh, I just did want to give a few updates um, I uh, at our, since our last meeting uh, the, our, the Raritan Valley Line Mayor's Alliance of which you know I'm a co-chair we hosted a meeting with over 20 mayors in attendance to hear speakers representing Governor Phil Murphy, Senator Cory Booker, and Congressman Tom Malinowski. 
Um, we also received an update. I think there were about seven New Jersey Transit executives that were there on the Raritan Valley Le Line Peak One Seat Ride Feasibility Study and Planned Service Improvements. Um, this feasibility study that they're working on is intended to determine what, how they could actually create a one seat, peak one seat ride into New York in absence of building a gateway. It's, that is supposed to be concluded in June and the results of that will be public. Um, I have never been more optimistic about the possibility of finally getting the RVL service we deserve and just re reassure everybody that we will keep fighting for commuters and residents and keep you updated as we continue to apply pressure on New Jersey Transit. I did want to mention one ordinance that we're passing tonight. Um, you may recall that I had formed a, a Human Relations Advisory Commission. This focus is really going to be on fostering an environment of inclusivity and mutual understanding and respect, certainly in light of many of the, um, the issues that we've had or in our town and others um, regarding anti-Semitism and racism. So we received numerous applications of the community, and what it meant is that there was a real need and appetite for the commission. So what we discovered is that we had so many amazing applicants that we need to expand the commission from the original seven intended members to nine to make sure that we have a commission that reflects the diversity of the community. So it's not a repeat of what we've done before, I just want to let you know why. Um, Jim mentioned the coronavirus. Um, we're going to start having daily calls. Uh, there are the governor's office has put in daily calls. I'm on a call with Congressman Malinowski's office for all the mayors in his district on Thursday. Um, uh, we are in contact with everybody all the time, and I have to tell you, you know, I get a behind the scenes look at terms of our readiness, both from the health perspective and our OEM perspective with our police and fire and everybody else. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I feel very confident that we have the right people in place and the right team in place to make sure we can handle what comes our way. Just wash your hands, 20 seconds. Don't do, do flash hands, whatever you got to do, but don't, don't shake. So, uh, but anyway, and we have a, um, a website, if you haven't seen it already, um, it is uh, the westfieldnj.gov coronavirus. They update it every single day with every single resource that you can imagine and updates on, on things happening around our county and our town and the state. So please pay attention. Um, I did want to mention uh, there is a, some, many have I've gotten some requests about the union, uh, concerns about the Union County College proposed cell tower in Cranford. Um, there was a meeting, I'm going to let Mike speak to it in a minute, um, but I just want to rest assured for those in Ward 2 in that area that have been concerned about it, um, I did speak to, I speak to Cranford Mayor Pat Giblin regularly about it. I spoke to him yesterday um, and he indicated um, that they are now, Verizon is actually contemplating moving the proposed tower closer to the cemetery. I did reach out to the board of Fairview Cemetery. They, they attended last night and I sent, they sent another note of objection. But um, I don't know if you have anything to add about the meeting last night, Mike? Yeah, uh, so the, uh, the zoning board meeting that we had, that was had uh, at the uh, at Cranford was uh, was long, All right, so it was uh, three hours of witness testimony uh, uh, that, um, uh, unfortunately did not allow for general comments from the public, which um, I was prepared to provide. Um, I wanted to really emphasize that uh, the town of Westfield, this town council, is uh, adamantly opposed to the uh, construction of a cell tower um, and uh, wanted to also let them know that I was representing Ward 2 there and uh, almost um, uh, 7,500 uh, residents that are part of Ward 2. So, um, uh, as I said, unfortunately didn't have a chance to speak, but there is another meeting coming up, and I think uh, the next week. So, so we'll be there. just we're paying attention, and we're all allies in this, and hopefully, hopefully, you'll yield a positive outcome. Um, and just a few more things. Uh, uh, I do. I did attend. I did host uh, along with the DWC a downtown property and business owners meeting last week. We had an incredible uh, amount of folks. Don was there, and and a bunch. And they all came out to meet the new DWC executive director Bob Suckerman, and to hear updates from our town planner Don Samet. These are critical stakeholders, which will be critical to the revitalization of our downtown. And I look forward to sharing with you some significant steps that the town is going to be taking in the next in that regard in just a few minutes. So after after the swearing ins. Um, but first, I'm going to come up because we I'd like to acknowledge some champions in our midst tonight. So I'm going to come up here. Um, I think I see some ladies back there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
got this nice new podium. It's nice. All right, can you hear me? Yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so in the past two weeks, uh, many of us, and certainly I certainly have, have been inspired by some amazing high school athletes who have taken home championship trophies. And uh, I figured, since we did just celebrate International Women's Day on Sunday, as Councilman Mackey referenced, it really only seemed appropriate to recognize these female athletes tonight. So, but, uh, so there's a couple here, and I'd first like to recognize uh, Westfield High School junior Katie Hamilton. Katie, where are you? Jen, where's your coach? Jen, come on up. Where is she? <laughs> I know the coaches have something to do with this, too. This is coach. So, uh, Katie, I was blown away. I actually watched your video on Facebook, I think. Um, so what you should know that um, Katie is the first Westfield girl to win a track and field state championship. And she won it in the 1600 meter with a winning time of 4 minutes and 57 seconds, which blows. <laughs> Was definitely worthy of recognition. So you had a crowd come out for you tonight and everything. <laughs> and uh, I just want to congratulate you and your coaches on the job and how well and so proud of how well you represent Westfield. So we have just something to acknowledge you and thank you so much and congratulations again for being here tonight. So I want to acknowledge the coaches. Um, you guys were amazing and inspiration and wow. And I saw that this, there's some youth on these teams. They're going to be a powerhouse for years to come. So congratulations. Um, it was quite amazing to see. So Liz, I, and I follow you on Twitter and I get all your updates. So you should know I was very inspired. So do you have anything to say about this team? Um, well, first off, I just want to thank you, Mayor Brindle, um, for acknowledging us. Um, these girls from the bottom of my heart and my staff, um, they've worked their butts off, not just for the season, but since the summer and really their whole careers. So we couldn't be prouder of them. And uh, the future does look bright. And fingers crossed, we keep it rolling. <laughs> All right, so the captains, let's see, Captains Caroline. All right, where are the captains? And Allie, where are they? Oh, there we are. You guys are so modest. Well, um, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you hand, I'm gonna, we've got certificates for everybody, and I'm going to let you captains hand these out to everybody. Is that okay? Um, but um, anyway, so just wanted to make sure, I think I've got, these are, um, oh yeah, this is the, these are, those are the varsity, these are JV. So, yes, excellent. Um, so can you hand those out and then we'll get a picture? Sound good? Yeah, that's a good one. 
what I want. You know, I, I actually want a word by word breakdown. I see. <laughs> Settle in. It's going to be a long night. Normally, <laughs> word two, play word two is really the only contributor. I just love that. Okay, and so while we are recognizing extraordinary achievements, we now get to move on to recognizing the promotions of some of Westfield's finest, as they are officially sworn in this evening. Mm -hmm. So congrats to Peter Wierzbicki and Elizabeth Betsy Snavik on their, Savnik on their promotion to detective, and to Morrison Kapka and Nicole Stavali on their promotions to lieutenant. It is, it is worth noting, in the spirit of International Women's Day, that Lieutenant Stavali is now the highest ranking female in the history of the Westfield Police Department. As she personally thank her. Originally this was going to be done two weeks ago and unfortunately I was out of town so I was really didn't want to miss this one. So thank you for waiting two weeks to let me be part of this. It's really quite an honor. So with that I think I'm handing my handing off to Chief Battalora to uh... That's so cool. Thank you Mayor. Good evening. I am so pleased tonight to announce the promotions of two sergeants to the rank of lieutenant of police and to recognize two officers being awarded the designation of detective of police and to announce the appointment of four police officers who have recently completed basic police officer training and have begun working here in Westfield. Every time I speak publicly, I always state what an incredible privilege it is for me to work for the town of Westfield and to serve as its chief of police. My message to these officers being recognized here tonight is that to hold these positions, to wear these uniforms, and to carry these badges is an incredible privilege. It is not a right. So be thankful for what you have achieved. Regardless of where you might work, being a police officer these days is not an easy job. Police officers once commanded unconditional respect. Now. Almost everything they do is controversial. They are the target of never-ending criticism, and their truthfulness will seemingly always be questioned unless there is incontrovertible video evidence to corroborate their statements. It seems as if every day they come to work, they must prove their value, their worth to society. These unjustifiable challenges will make one question whether or not it's even worth being a police officer today. I have been on this job for almost 25 years now, and no matter how difficult it may be, or how difficult it may become, I have no intention of retiring just yet. To me, this is the greatest job on earth. And every day I thank the good Lord for giving me the privilege to do it. And so I tell you this, know that you do good. Know that you make a difference in this community each and every day you come to work, whether you realize it or not. Hold your heads high when you tell people you're a Westfield police officer. Be proud of who you are and what you do. And remember, no matter how difficult things are or may get, these positions are a privilege 
not a right. Serve with great honor, unquestionable integrity, and tremendous pride. And at the end of your careers, I am certain you will be forever thankful for the opportunities you have been given here tonight. Lieutenant Nicole Stavali, please come up with your family. Sergeant Stavali has been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant of Police, effective January 13, 2020. Lieutenant Stavali was appointed to the Westfield Police Department as a police officer on January 17, 2005, and graduated from the John H. Stanmore Police Academy of Union County on June 8, 2005, ranked first in her class of 52 recruits. After initially serving in the Operations Division as a patrol officer, Lieutenant Stavali was later assigned to the Administrative Services Division, where she performed a multitude of critical functions, which included those of training coordinator, police officer scheduling system administrator, and custodian of property and evidence. Lieutenant Stavali was designated a plainclothes officer on May 30, 2011, and was assigned to the Detective Bureau on January 14, 2014, where she remained until her appointment to Sergeant of Police on July 1, 2015. <clears throat> as a sergeant, Lieutenant Stavali served both as a patrol supervisor and as of August 6, 2018, as a Detective Bureau supervisor. She is a decorated officer, having been awarded two command citations, a unit citation, and the Hurricane Sandy Service Award during her 15 years of completed service. Lieutenant Stavali attended St. Peter's College in Jersey City, where she graduated in 2002, magna cum laude, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in criminal justice. Prior to her employment as a police officer with Westfield, she served as a police officer for the United States Capitol Police in Washington, D.C. from 2002 to 2004, and is a graduate of both the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Glencoe, Georgia, and the United States Capitol Police Training Academy in Cheltenham, Maryland. With this promotion, Lieutenant Stavali shall become the first ever female lieutenant and the highest ranking female officer in the 117 year history of the Westfield Police Department. <laughs> Lieutenant Stavali shall be assigned as a watch commander in the patrol division. Ready? This is amazing. To repeat after me, I, Nicole Stavali, do solemnly swear that I do and will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in the state of New Jersey under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all duties of the rank of lieutenant within the Westfield Police Department according to the best of my abilities and understanding. So help me God.
Lieutenant Morrison Kapka, would you please come up with your family? Yes. Sergeant Morrison Kapka has been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant of Police, effective January 13, 2020. Lieutenant Kapka was appointed to the Westfield Police Department as a police officer on January 21, 2003. He graduated from the John H. Stanmore Police Academy of Union County on December 12, 2003 and was subsequently assigned to the Operations Division as a patrol officer. Lieutenant Kapka was assigned to the Union County Prosecutor's Office Narcotic Strike Force from May of 2013 to May of 2014. During such time, he, grant, he was granted the full authority of a county investigator and charged with conducting narcotics-related criminal investigations. Lieutenant Kapka was appointed to Sergeant of Police on November 24, 2004, and has been assigned as a patrol supervisor since. Lieutenant Kapka is a highly decorated officer, having been awarded the Westfield Police Department's prestigious Medal of Valor for his actions on July 9, 2010, which resulted in the arrest of an armed carjacking suspect following a dangerous high-speed motor, spe motor vehicle pursuit on U.S. Highway 22 that ended with a crash in Union Township. The suspect, who was forcibly removed from within the carjacked vehicle by then-Officer Kapka through a smashed driver's side window, was found to be in possession of a fully loaded automatic MAC-10 submachine gun used during the robbery, as well as an additional quantity of ammunition. For his courageous and brave actions, Lieutenant Kapka was named the Martin Wahlberg American Legion Post Number 3 of Westfield, Law Enforcement Officer of the Year in 2011. Lieutenant Kapka has also been awarded two Medals of Merit, four Command Citations, the Hurricane Sandy Service Award, and two Certificates of Merit during his 17 years of completed service. Lieutenant Kapka was awarded a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminal Justice from New Jersey City University in 2004. He served in the United States Marine Corps from 1996 to 2000 and was honorably discharged at the rank of Corporal E4. Lieutenant Kapka shall remain assigned to the Operations Division as a watch commander and additionally he shall serve as the Westfield Police Department's Supervising Firearms Instructor. Please repeat after me. I, Marcin Kapka, do solemnly swear that I do and will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments. Established in, the United States, established in the United States and in the state of New Jersey, the of New Jersey under, the authority of the people, under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully, impartially and justly perform all duties of the rank of lieutenant within the Westfield Police Department according to the best of my abilities and understanding. So help me God. Congratulations.
Congrats. There is perhaps no more prominent position in any law enforcement agency than that of detective. In the Westfield Police Department, officers are assigned to the position at the sole direction and discretion of the chief of police. To be awarded the designation of detective is no easy feat. One must not only possess the necessary knowledge and skills to be an effective criminal investigator, but he or she must be self-motivated, driven, and able to work under intense pressure and without close supervision. With this, while this assignment is not a promotion, it does, however, come with the impressive title and the prized gold detective shield. Tonight, it is my pleasure to award the designation of police, designation of detective of police, to two outstanding young police officers, both of whom who have distinguished themselves and truly earned the title through hard work and dedication to duty. I can tell you this: as hard as these officers worked to earn these cherished gold detective shields is as hard as they will have to work to keep them. Detective Peter Wisbicki, would you please come up with your family? <laughs> Detec Detective Wisbicki graduated from the Somerset County Police Academy's alternate route program for police officers on December 16, 2010, and was appointed to the Westfield Police Department as a police officer on May 14, 2012. Detective Wersbicki was assigned to the Union County Prosecutor's Office Guns, Gangs, Drugs, and Violent Crimes Task Force from July 1, 2016 to July 31, 2017, and was assigned to the Detective Bureau as a plainclothes officer on May 13, 2019. He has been awarded the designation of Detective of Police effective March 1, 2020, and is presently detached from the Westfield Police Department and assigned to the New Jersey State Police, where he is working collectively with other agencies to address some of this town's most pressing criminal matters. Detective Wersbicki is a recipient of a Westfield Police Department command citation, a unit citation, the Hurricane Sandy Service Award, and a Certificate of Merit. He is a 2008 graduate of Raritan Valley Community College with an associate degree in law enforcement. <laughs> Detective Elizabeth Savick, would you please come up with your family? Detective Savnick graduated from the Somerset County Police Academy's alternate route program for police officers on June 23, 2009, and served as a police officer for the Middlesex County College Police Department from June 24, 2010, until her appointment to the Westfield Police Department as a police officer on September 19, 2011. She served as a school resource officer at Westfield High School for the 2016-17 and the 2017-18 school years, and as a school resource officer at Edison Intermediate School for the 2018-19 school year. Detective Savnick was assigned to the Detective Bureau as a plainclothes officer on July 1, 2019, and was designated as the Westfield Police Department's juvenile officer. I could not think of a better person to work with the youth of this community than her. She has been awarded the designation of Detective of Police, effective March 1, 2020. Detective Savnick is a recipient of the Westfield Police Department's Command Citation and the Hurricane Sandy Service Award. She is a 2008 graduate of Bloomsburg University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Liberal Arts.
Officer Donald Picciano, please come up. Mom and Grandma, come on up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me choked up, I easily. Officer Picciano of Roselle Park is a 2014 graduate of Westfield High School and a 2017 graduate of Union County College with an Associate of Science degree in Criminal Justice. Officer Picciano was appointed to the Westfield Police Department on July 11, 2020 and graduated from the John H. Stanwer Police Academy of Union County on December 18, 2020. He is presently assigned to the Westfield Police Department's 16-week field training program. Officer Picciano was previously employed as a parking enforcement officer for the Westfield Police Department. Can you repeat after me? I, Donald Picciano, uh, do solemnly swear that I do and will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in the State of New Jersey under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully impartially and justly perform all duties of police officer within the Westfield Police Department according to the best of my abilities and understanding. So help me God. Congratulations. Officer Anthony Percante, please come up with your family. Come on, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Officer Percante of Westfield is a 2014 graduate of Westfield High School and a 2018 graduate of Rutgers University, Newark, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminal Justice. While attending Rutgers Newark, he was a four-year member of the Division III Scarlet Raiders baseball team. Officer Bricante was appointed to the Westfield Police Department on July 11, 2020, and graduated from the John H. Stanwer Police Academy of Union County on December 18, 2020. He is presently assigned to the 16-week field training program with a projected completion date in May of 2020. Repeat after me. I, Anthony Perconte, do solemnly swear that I do and will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same 
and to the governments established in the United States and in the state of New Jersey under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all duties of police officer within the Westfield Police Department according to the best of my abilities and understanding. So help me God. Congratulations. Officer Alexis Ferrero, please come up with your family. <laughs> Officer Ferrero of Edison is a 2010 graduate of Edison High School and a 2019 graduate of Middlesex County College with an associate in science degree in criminal justice. Officer Ferrero was appointed to the Westfield Police Department on July 11, 2020, and graduated from the John H. Stanmore Police Academy of Union County on December 18, 2020. She is presently assigned to the Westfield Police Department's 16-week field training program. Officer Ferrero was previously employed as a civilian crime analyst with the Edison Police Department. Repeat after me. I, Alexis Ferrero, I, Alexis Ferrero do, solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I do and will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution, and the Constitution of, the of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and, bear true faith and, allegiance, and allegiance to the same, to the same. and to the governments established, to the governments established in, the United States in the United States and in the State of New Jersey under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, impartially, justly perform all duties of police officer within the Westfield Police Department, to the best of my, according to the best of my abilities and understanding. So help me God. Congratulations. We have one more. Our Officer Marco Vijac, please come up with your family.
Officer Jacques Roselle is a 2005 graduate of Abraham Clark High School and a 2009 graduate of Kane University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminal Justice. Officer Jacques was appointed to the Westfield Police Department on July 11, 2020 and graduated from the John H. Stanmore Police Academy of Union County on December 18, 2020. He is presently assigned to the Westfield Police Department's 16-week field tra training program. Officer Jacques was previously employed with the Installation and Sales Division of Xfinity. You ready? Repeat after me. I, Markovi Jacques, do solemnly swear that I do and will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and in the state of New Jersey under the authority of the people and that I will faithfully impartially and justly perform all duties of police officer within the Westfield Police Department according to the best of my abilities and understanding so help me God congratulations I would just like to uh, thank all of you for coming out tonight to wish these officers the best in their career. Um, and I would like to thank the mayor and the council and uh, our town administrator, James Gilday, for their continued uh, commitment to public safety here in Westfield. Thank you so much. Why don't we take two or three minutes, all of you that are here for the celebration of these fine men and women do not need to stay for the rest of this meeting. I'm sure you have more important things that you'd rather be tending to. So feel free to leave. We will not be insulted and then we'll continue with the meeting after you've had time to adjourn. Okay. All right. So, um, all right, so we will uh, move on to the business uh, at hand. Uh, all right, um, and, hey, uh, Chris, you might want to grab the door over there. It's like, thanks, thank you. Well, I, you know, I think it's uh, only downhill from that, right? Now nah, we got lifelong West Coast coming. All right, so um, that was exciting and that was a highlight. Always is a highlight whenever we have that opportunity. So that was great. So um, tonight we have a couple presentations and I think we're gonna start with um, Lifelong Westfield, who is our organization, new commission and on behalf of seniors. And so I think Brad, are you, is it Brad Shinani is gonna come up? Anybody else? Yep. Oh, perfect, okay, come up and, enter, come up and do the introductions, Brad. And this is continuing the theme of honoring Girl, absolutely. I love women it. in our community and in our high school. Well, I, I, so Lifelong Westfield is, is a new advisory council uh, that Brad Chenani is one of the co-chairs on the liaison. And we're proud to, uh, to really help um, 
promote aging in place and living in Westfield from you know throughout your life and uh, there's a number of new initiatives that we've brought to benefit seniors in town especially a bunch of events but tonight um, we have Lily McGuire and Emily Duncan who are high school juniors who have been working on a big initiative over the last uh, I don't know six or nine months and we are unveiling it today and I thought it was really appropriate for the community to hear about it so Emily and Lily thank you guys for all your hard work and I'll turn it over to you Okay, thank you, David. Um, yeah, as we said, I'm Emily Duncan, and I'm a junior at Westfield High School, and I started working with Lifelong Westfield um, over a year ago, and we are, as David said, a senior advisory council founded almost two years ago to try to keep seniors living in Westfield and educate them about events and services available to them in our town. And we have been working on a newsletter to kind of inform our seniors. And yesterday, our first edition was released uh, via email to over 200 recipients um, in and around town. And we are also planning to put print copies of our newsletter in places around town frequented by seniors like the library and the community center. Hi, I'm Lily McGuire. I'm also a junior at Westfield High School. So the newsletter pretty much starts with like an explanation on what Lifelong is and some of our events. And then there's a list of who's on the Senior Advisory Council and like a brief introduction on all of them. And then we also have an article on walking safety because we collaborated with the police department to give out safety vests for the seniors who like to walk a lot. And then we put an article on Westfield 300, senior discounts in Westfield, a featured senior column, and an article with health tips. Um, so we're very excited to release our next edition in June and excited to see what Lifelong does for all the seniors in Westfield. I just wanted to thank the mayor, the council, for their tremendous support over the past two years. Uh, we've been able to grow tremendously, and we have some tremendous initiatives for 2020 and forward. And I also want to thank the police and fire department for everything that they've done to help the seniors in town, because this is a joint effort of everybody's, and Westfield is a phenomenal town, and it's a great place to age in place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brian. Brad has really been a phenomenal, enthusiastic supporter of this. So thank you, We're Brad. Girls, lucky. and that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so thank much. you. Thank you. And um, and then I think I'm bringing Greg O'Neill. Where's Greg? Are you, and we're going to introduce some uh, Department of Public Works. Good evening, Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of Council. It is my distinct pleasure to present to you the production report year 2019 of the Westfield Department of Public Works. In my short five-year tenure here, this has been our most productive year. The numbers are phenomenal, and the numbers, as far as I'm concerned, cannot be rivaled by any other community in the state of New Jersey. To briefly review some of these, our Parks Division, led by Richard Eubanks, took care of, mowed, weed whacked on 72 town properties, 32,000 acres of lawn. Our ball fields are continuously being groomed, and they were groomed a total of 1,820 times last season. In our downtown, led by Craig Gibson, he has been in charge of over 30 events dealing with 20 different groups here in, here in Westfield. He's in charge of the setup, the breakdown, and the monitoring of these events. Tremendous coordination has to go into this. And along with that, he also, he and his crew, have removed 130 tons of solid waste from our downtown alone. In our forestry division, supervised by Robert Kosciolik, he planted and maintained, along with his crew members, 920 trees in one year. Woo! 
Along with that initiative, they were pruning and removing an additional 694 trees. And in our five year continuously growing and becoming more aggressive planting program, we have planted 2,464 trees in the rights of way and on public property here in the town of Westfield. In our Rose Division, we had a huge expansion. Just doing potholes in town, Eugene Watkins and his crew filled 300 tons of bituminous, bitum, bituminous concrete and also through your great assistance, we were able to purchase a new roller and a box paver which allowed us to patch large areas to the tune of 219 tons. This is going to increase because as we get better with that paver, those areas will, be, will, will uh, become more frequent and will be more utilized on a year in, year out basis. We also have three members of our department who are mechanics. They handle over 250 cars, SUVs, trucks, and pieces of equipment. We have our signs and manufacturing and installation, and we also do our own in-house line painting. We take care of the sanitary sewers in town, all 528,000 feet of them. We clean them, we maintain them, and especially in times of emergency. And lastly, our conservation center, with its 13 different and expanded services, we have now been able to charge different services in there to take the cost, including overtime, to zero. <laughs> this is just a very brief overview of what goes on in the Public Works Department. I could keep you here till tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. explaining to you exactly <laughs> what we do. But there is a party to get to. I am truly blessed to have such a wonderful, dedicated staff of professionals. Through our supervisory staff, through our production staff, and through our wonderful relationship with our Teamsters Union, we have amassed a workforce, a production staff, second to none. And I'd like to just take a moment to say thank you all so very, very much. <laughs> this, of course, would not be possible without a symbiotic relationship between the council, all of you sitting here this evening, between our administrator and the Public Works Department. We'd like to say thank you for your vote of confidence in us. We'd like to say thank you for your commitment to us. We will always strive to do the very, very best for each and every person in this beautiful, beautiful municipality. Saying thank you is not going to be enough, but our day in, day out actions will hopefully continuously provide greater health, safety, and welfare to the town of Westfield. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> and finally, I would like to thank Chiefs Battle Tiller, and Guzman. With our expanding role in the Office of Emergency Management, we have taken on many, many greater responsibilities and duties, which has truly enhanced our professionalism. We as a department are proud to work with those, proud to work with those who genuinely care who genuinely want to protect 
and genuinely want to serve for all residents. Being a part of OEM is something special. Not many public works departments in the state of New Jersey do it. And for that, we want to say thank you. And we want to say thank you so very much for having the pleasure of working as closely as we do with you and look forward to many years, many, many more years of this wonderful relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your indulgence and good evening. I just ask that anyone who is here from Public Works stand up, even the three guys in the back, so we have three. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Robbie, <laughs> supervisors, Public Works guys in the back. Again, as Greg said, thank you all for your work and your production last year and every year. And can I just say a quick word, uh, just as the chair of the Public Works Committee, um, Greg, Greg and your team, you guys do a great job. We say every time we get together that Public Works touches every resident every day, and we have them to thank for keeping our town in tip-top shape. So thank you guys for everything you do. And I just want to highlight two really quick things, actually three. Um, very, very briefly, they embrace Westfield Connect. We embrace technology to help residents help us keep our town in better shape. And it's because of Public Works that Westfield Connect has helped you report on potholes, ask for trees, and things like that. So a big thank you to Public Works for doing that. That's no easy task, but I think it's made a huge difference in our town. Second of all, recycling at the Conservation Center. Greg didn't share the stats, but it's, it's unbelievable how many plastic bags, pieces of styrofoam, batteries, fluorescent bulbs, and toys that we've collected. It's ongoing and it's every day and Rich Eubanks has really, he's been the, the leader of that and he is, every time we ask to do something, he does it. So thank you very much for that. And I know the residents really appreciate it because at the end of the day, that's what we're here for is to serve residents. And lastly, I invite everybody to go to Tamaquas Park. Richie and the park's crew took a down tree. We needed a fence and they took the down tree and they built a fence out of a down tree and it looks amazing. It, fit right, it fits right in and most importantly, we saved the town $3,000. So thank you. So we're almost going to get to the business at hand. I'm going to do a little something unorthodox. I'm going to actually come up to the podium because I just want to give everybody a little context for some things that we're going to be uh, voting on tonight. So. Wow, there's less of a crowd here than there was earlier. Um, as many of you all know, for the last two years, we have been working on a lot of planning in town. Uh, many of you participated in the public uh, input for the master plan reexamination, which was adopted by the planning board uh, in December. And so we've spent a lot of time doing planning, and uh, we're here tonight as the beginning of the action. And so I just want to get outline a little bit what I see as a bold action plan for a brighter future for Westfield, which is what I committed to when I ran for mayor two years ago. So indulge me, and it's a little lengthy, but it requires a lot of explanation and context. So I'll try to mix it up, but uh, so bear with me. In two weeks, we will be presenting our 2020 budget to the public. While it's still being finalized, I do want to take this opportunity to provide everyone some context behind the numbers, let you know what to expect in this year's tax bill, and most importantly, share our growth strategy for the future. First and foremost, some background, and it's what I discovered when I came into the mayor's office. For the past decade, the town has taken a very conservative approach to budgeting, which has effectively maintained the status quo while yielding a positive AAA bond rating and a sizable surplus. We talk about it all the time. It's an approach that a financial advisor would apply to a couple in retirement, ensuring there's adequate funding to support basic needs for the remaining years while leaving something for the grandkids. For Westfield, this has resulted in a healthy nest egg, but has come at the expense of long-term investments in roads, parks, infrastructure, and our downtown to adequately meet what I believe are the reasonable expectations of taxpayers. 
It's a strategy that also has made us overly reliant on revenue sources that actually contradict good long-term policy, such as parking tickets and permits for teardowns, road openings, and a lot of construction. This not only undermines our neighborhood character, our downtown vibrancy, and our quality of life, but it also makes us vulnerable to the winds of the economy, which has necessitated an excessive surplus as a safeguard. But since I was elected, we've begun to take a different approach. Under the leadership of amazing finance chair, Councilwoman Linda Hapgood, we have begun transitioning our financial approach to one that a financial advisor would apply to a growing family with a long and expansive future ahead. We've made investments in roads, 20 miles paved last year, equipment and automation, as we just heard from our uh, Greg O'Neill, while we're turning excess surplus to the taxpayers in the form of a 0% municipal tax increase last year. That reduction was a deliberate decision made in part to reduce taxpayer uncertainty over the impact of the county mandated tax revaluation. The final outcome of which resulted in a decrease in taxes for 57% of residential properties. We also made conscious decisions to reduce downtown parking enforcement. As a matter of fact, 2017 we gave out 24,000 parking tickets downtown. To last year we gave out 11,000. And that was intentional and we considered an investment in our downtown, but it's also cost us $130,000 in court revenues. We've also chosen to discourage teardowns and subdivisions. Demolition permits have been down 30% since I was elected. And protect our newly paved roads with a temporary road moratorium until long-term better solution was determined, which we'll be introducing in a few weeks. That road opening moratorium costs us $150,000. In the short term, while well, we have made these choices to positively impact issues that matter to you, understandably they have, resu they have re resulted in a revenue shortfall that will force us to make some hard budget decisions this year. To offset that loss, there will be a tax adjustment for residents and department budgets have been reduced so that our town's budget is anticipated to increase by only 0.05% among one of the lowest increases in recent history. It's also very important to remember that the town only receives 16% of the property taxes we collect. We have the unenviable position of being the tax collector for everything, but being the smallest beneficiary of what we get. 24% of our taxes are sent to Union County. I know it's a sore spot, and we are their largest municipal tax contributor. While 58% of our taxes go to the schools and 2% to the library, which is state mandated. Also of note, and it's very critical to remember, 90% of our taxes are paid by residents, not commercial businesses, the highest in Union County. Reinforcing the need to diversify and expand our tax base if we are to improve enhanced town services. Going forward, how will we accomplish our goal of increasing revenue to achieve our ambitious plans for parks, fields, and downtown revitalization? without relying on tax increases? The answer lies, in large part, in the economic benefits of redevelopment. It's a tool created by the state legislator that is employed by many New Jersey towns to jumpstart their revitalization, including Cranford, Summit, South Orange, Princeton, and Morristown, to name a few. Westfield is one of the few towns in the state that has never capitalized on the financial benefits of redevelopment. Now listen, I know, and it's the reason I ran for mayor, there has been a good deal of concern over the health and vitality of our downtown. And rightly or wrongly, there's long been a perception that the vibrancy of our downtown reflects the health of our town generally. A thoughtful and well-planned redevelopment strategy allows us to control and drive the outcome of future development to bring our master plan re-examination goals to fruition, things that you said you wanted prioritizing the downtown recommendations as a means to support its revitalization. So bear with me, I'm gonna get a little technical, but it's important for you to understand what redevelopment means. As a municipality, we have the authority to declare certain public or private properties as areas in need of redevelopment, a designation that the state allows if properties meet qualifying criteria. Once designated, a town may enter into a redevelopment agreement with a potential developer 
which typically includes a payment in lieu of taxes, referred to as a pilot. It is beneficial for three significant reasons. One, it provides the town significant control over a project, including the power to dictate architecture, building materials, green spaces, amenities, and more. Secondly, very importantly, it allows the town to retain 95% of the negotiated fee, with only 5% going to the county, as opposed to 24%. It also provides up to 30 years of consistent recurring revenue to the town. So you can imagine what the budgeting process would be like if we're guaranteed a certain amount of revenue every year for 30 years. So let me give you an example. 333 Central, the apartment building on South and Central. Not my favorite building, and I've been very vocal about it. I think it was an appropriate use of the space, but I don't think the architecture and the aesthetics should be the gateway that we should always expect to Westfield. And that, but we did not do that with the redevelopment designation. So therefore, the town was unable to dictate the project's aesthetics, nor reap the benefits of a pilot agreement. So as a result, let me listen to this. The town currently only receives 16%, or $72,000 of their current tax bill of $451,000. The county, by the way, receives $108,000 of that. If it had been a designated redevelopment area with a pilot agreement, the town could be receiving a 30-year payment of approximately $380,000 a year versus $20,000 for the county as a payment in lieu of taxes or a pilot. This $308,000 positive difference to the town would be an annual recurring revenue stream that could be used towards improving our parks, adding new fields, and enhancing our downtown. And as a side, I just did a little back of the envelope. If we also did the Pan Am cleaners and the car wash as redevelopment agreements, it would have been about an incremental $300,000 to the town every year. So we also know it's in our collective best interest to adequately invest in our schools. Pilot programs allow the opportunity for the town to enter into, into creative agreements with the school district to support specific initiatives that benefit the community as a whole, a very potentially timely opportunity. For reasons that remain unclear to me, Westfield has never pursued a redevelopment designation. The adoption of our affordable housing settlement, however, has provided us with the opportunity to consider redevelopment designations to maximize the economic benefits of development that is already planned. It also enables us to ensure that these developments are aligned with our vision and that they adequately address community concerns regarding traffic, school enrollment, and infrastructure. To that end, the proposed project at the end of South Avenue towards Garwood on the border, uh, we call it the Sewell's property, um, it's 418 to 448 South Avenue, that we have just designated that as the, as the town's first redevelopment area, as a preface to an expected agreement with Elite Properties, who's the owner of that development. So tonight, the council is doing some very important things. We will be voting on resolutions asking for redevelopment studies to assess all eight municipal parking lots in our downtown and the property that the Rialto building occupies to see if they qualify as non-condemnation areas in need of redevelopment. And the non-condemnation is important because it means it's not an eminent domain. Additionally, we will be asking for redevelopment study of the Lord and Taylor sites, and that means both the main store and the two parking lots they own across the street. As a result of our continued conversations with the owner of that property, Hudson's Bay Corporation, an order to plan for the future of that location. So these potential designations do not necessarily mean that we are proposing developments on any or all of these sites. But by designating them all, it allows us to take a strategic approach to identifying the best uh, opportunities and locations for new parking solutions, which is what everybody have said they wanted, and revenue generating residential, retail, and commercial development, as well as planning for the possibility of a new firehouse, community center, and plaza, public plazas. As with the master plan, we will be seeking and encouraging public input into any proposed downtown plan, a process that will probably take place during the approximately three to six months that this study will take to complete. 
And I just want to reassure everybody, nothing is going to move forward without lots of public input. This is your downtown, not mine. Additionally, in consultation with the downtown property owners uh, after the meeting that I held with them on Thursday night, we will soon be seeking a study to qualify our entire special improvement district as an area in need of rehabilitation. It's a lower threshold designation which does not allow for pilot agreements. It does, however, allow for agreements with property owners to encourage them to improve their properties through five-year tax abatements on the value of their improvements. This designation would ensure that all downtown stakeholders have an opportunity to participate in and benefit from the revitalization of our downtown. And many towns have already done this. The entire uh, borough of Metuchen is an area in need of rehab, entire town of South Orange, um, and a lot of Fanwood. So in closing, I know I just threw a lot at you. These opportunities have the, that have the opportunity and the potential to reshape Westfield's future by establishing significant new revenue streams while transforming our downtown to ensure the long-term vibrancy of our community. And I can think of no better legacy as we celebrate our 300th year. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with me on that one. It was a lot, but uh, lots more to come on that. It's a very exciting year. Um, okay, so now, now to the task at hand. Start the meeting. Yes, now we'll start the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> now the meeting begins. Okay, Mrs. Rowley, do we have any advertised hearings? Yes, Mayor, there are two advertised hearings. The first is General Ordinance Number 2160 an ordinance amending the code of the town of Westfield, New Jersey, in order to require notification to the downtown Westfield Corporation of building permit and development applications. Um, due to additional noticing requirements that are necessary, the public hearing for this ordinance is going to be postponed until March 24, 2020. Uh, the second is General Ordinance Number 2161, an ordinance amending the town code to establish regulations concerning vacant and or abandoned properties. Anyone wishing to be heard on General Ordinance Number 2161, Please come up to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. See no one, may you may close a hearing. This hearing is closed. Councilman Mackey, please move for the adoption of General Ordinance Number 2161. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to move for the adoption of General Ordinance Number 2161 on second reading, an ordinance amending the town code to establish regulations concerning vacant and or abandoned properties. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Contract. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Legrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Boyce? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from the Town Council Conference Session and regular meeting of February 25th, 2020? So moved. Motion by Councilman Hapgood. Second? Second. Second by Councilman Dardia. Any, any discussion? All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? This motion is carried. <coughs> Do we have any petitions or, or uh, uh, communications? No, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for open discussion by citizens. Anyone may come up to the microphone and speak to the Council on any subject on which we have jurisdiction. Please state your name and address and limit your comments to 10 minutes. Uh, Joe Wilson, 500 block of Downer Street. Uh, I was here four and a half months ago to um, ask the town of Westfield to amend the town code to deal with the issue of nuisance fires. Um, last night, I tried to get home before dark to close our windows that I'd left open because it was a beautiful day yesterday. It was 70 degrees. Because my next, next door neighbor lights fires in his yard frequently. I got home, the fire was already raging. Went in the house, we had strong fumes throughout the house. So I went outside, I asked my neighbor to 
please put the fire out so I can air out the house. I said, well, I've got fumes in the house. He refused to put it out. I told him I would call the police. The police told me there's nothing they can do about it and that we have to live with those fumes with our windows shut. Um, on November, I was here October, uh, late, late October, I was here about this issue. On November 30th at 3.30 in the morning, the same neighbor was burning a fire, huge fire, burning cardboard, large cardboard, I don't know, broken down Amazon boxes, whatever. Um, I, I photographed the fire. I didn't call the fire department. I didn't call the police. The issue is I've got a next door neighbor that refuses to notify me before he lights a fire. He has three sons, all four male members of that family light fires in the yard at all hours of the day and night, I mean, excuse me, I take the day part back, of all hours of the night, I've seen that fire burning at dawn, attended. There was one unattended fire. Um, I've got the, un, it's unfortunate that I live next door to what I call a fire pit bug. This guy's got a, got like a, Giant supply of wood. I don't know how you measure a cord of wood. He has two fire pits. There's a consent agreement that requires him to notify me before he lights a fire or any member of his family lights a fire so I can close the windows. He refuses to honor this consent agreement from the Westfield Municipal Court. And this amounts to bullying. I'm being bullied by this neighbor. And adult bullying is a real thing. You can look it up. It's typically carried out by someone in some position of power. And he has the power of these fires to burn 20, 20 yards due west to our home where the prevailing winds are. And if he'll just notify me, um, I can shut, shut the windows and he can burn those fires all night long. And now with the weather getting warmer, these fires are more and more frequent. There was one day last December where they had two separate fires. The one son went out and lit a fire. Several hours later, another son came out and lit a fire. So I either have to stand vigil at all times or keep our windows closed. This is not fair. Now, um, I read it, tap into about the chicken, about the hens, that they were considering perhaps allowing people to have hens and chickens if their neighbors approve of it. I don't know what you're going to do with this if you're just going to not, not do anything about it. Other municipalities, such as Cranford and Edison, have... Um, clauses in their ordinances specifically addressing nuisance fires. Mr. If the fire Wilson, becomes a nuisance, it's put out. Yes. Um, you and I have communicated uh, via email. This is actually on the agenda for tomorrow night's code review. So okay. at this juncture, I can't tell you what the outcome is going to be, but I can tell you it will be a discussion amongst the new uh, code okay. review members. I would just ask that you be creative Try to think out of the box. You, you can't tell someone you can't burn a fire in their, in their yard. My situation is personal. You know, don't do it for me and don't not do it for him. Do it, do it because it's right. But I need some recourse. And this was my recourse so ordered I, by the court. So I, I would get a text. I would shut the windows. They would, they would burn their fires? So Fine. Mr. Mr. Wilson, we don't have the jurisdiction over any court order, as, as you know. But yes. I, what I would suggest is if we can um, res resume this conversation after the code review meeting tomorrow night, and okay. we could get a, an outcome of, of the ordinance that's being proposed. Yeah, I also want to say that we are, we are senior citizens. I'm 65. I've lived in this town for my, for my whole, whole life. I just don't want to be a prisoner mm -hmm. in my own home where I have to keep the windows closed at all times because this fire, he could go out and light a fire 3 a.m. as he has done. 
and, and the windows are open, the smoke comes in, the fumes, fumes come in. Well, so there needs to be some creative solution to this. Allow us an opportunity to discuss it as a committee. We, I know your concerns. I will bring them to the committee. I have your communications, and we will certainly report back to you. Okay, thank you. I appreciate you. you coming. Thank, thank you. you so much. Welcome. Anybody else? Good evening, Sean Smith, 541 Cumberland Street, uh, Mayor, Council. Um, I've appeared before you a number of times relating to safety issues, relating to the fields in town. Um, in the last meeting, uh, we heard a nice presentation about the parks plan, which candidly, in reviewing, I, I really think is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and one of the concerns I had was about payment. I'm glad we heard today about pilot programs. I actually think it's a brilliant way to deal with it, so I think it's good that the Council's looking at it that way. Um, and I wish we had heard that last week because it would have addressed some people's concerns about financing um, or last meeting. But one of the issues that came up is we heard two school board members talk about how they were, I'll use the term blindsided, they didn't use that term, on the rec plan and the fact that the plan targeted some of their properties for development, um, in, in particular adding some turf fields. And I, I, as a citizen, expressed my shock that they would come forward and say that. And I was very disappointed that it felt like either the council or the board of ed or somebody was politicking and using the safety of our children and the continued uh, field conditions as something, some kind of pressure point. Um, and when I left the meeting, I, I left pretty upset uh, personally. Um, I coach, I watch these kids. And since the last meeting, I've received emails from different town teams or clubs and they're telling us now they can't use other fields that they thought they were gonna use this spring because they're no longer safe. Um, but at the same time, I actually did a little bit of investigation, and I was surprised to learn, and I wish I had known it when I was here at the last meeting, that a member or a representative of the Board of Ed was actually on the steering committee for that plan, uh, was a part of all of the, or apparently a part of most, if not all, of the stakeholder meetings, and was part of the recommendations and summary talking about turfing their fields, and then the Board of Ed members came up here and said that they were blindsided by it. So I went back and watched the meetings, and in those meetings, that same representative was not talking to the Board of Ed about the plans that were being discussed, at least apparently in the steering committee, and in fact made representations or recommendations to the Board of Ed on a five-year plan for the Board of Ed's fields, which included turfing an entirely different field that wasn't a part of any of the rec plan. Now that's very disappointing to me, because the same people who approved that five-year plan, knowing that they had a person in the steering committee that was dealing with something else approve something different. So as the council, somebody's doing something wrong behind the scenes. I don't know who it is. I now have different suspicions, um, but it is being politicized. Uh, there are letters being sent publicly uh, by different po political parties politicizing this. They're being emailed across the town. But I don't care about the politics of it. I'm here because the priority that is in that plan Number one was safety of our fields to our children. So I ask this council, when you're working with your rec commission, that you direct them under the plan that has been approved to prioritize the town fields. Because based upon what I'm hearing, I don't think the Board of Ed is gonna work with you, okay? And you've got fields, memorial, that you've got a plan to turf. You have Tamaquis, and I, listen, we can all argue about whether that one field in Tamaquis should be turf or grass, but everybody agrees it should be a safe field for our children. So prioritize that and fast track that. Fast track Sycamore, fast track Memorial, and if you figure out a way to work with the Board of Ed and break down whatever barrier has been between the town council and the Board of Ed and whoever's causing it, great. But in the meantime, our kids are losing fields our soccer program is playing at Wardlaw, a private school, and in Garwood. Our, our lacrosse program is now playing in Scotch Plains and at limited fields in town. We are losing our town programs entirely. Our children are losing the fields. I need you and our citizens need you to do this, and I implore you as a council, talk to your direct commission and fast track those fields that you absolutely control, because if you don't, I have a feeling that this is going to be a much larger political issue and it is going to be lost. 
Thank you. So can I just, before you go, oh, yeah. um, so let me just comment on a few things because in spite of what you might read or whatever letters are being sent are really uh, not at all material to the real conversations that are happening. And I, in spite of what you might have thought appeared, I actually have a very good relationship with the Board of Ed and Peggy Oster and I had coffee like two days after that meeting. So there are, we've already had meetings with the Board of Ed and, 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 and with their um, um, facilities committee and we are absolutely working together, at least the, the parks folks and the Board of Ed to move that forward. But we are parallel tracking a bunch of stuff. It's not just that one while we're waiting for other things. We are also talking about Memorial and we're also talking about what we can do in tomorrow. So, um, so I would suggest, you know, to save your time and having to come to council meetings all the time, feel free to just reach out. To, I'll give you the full update and put you in touch if you want to keep abreast of the people who have those conversations. I can tell you, though, so, at the public meetings, yeah. the Board of Ed's not discussing it. So, well, I... That's a, and, that's a, and as a citizen, that's a problem. Then I, you know what? I would suggest you go to the Board of Ed meetings and ask them well. about that. <laughs> Going to as many as I can. That, yeah. I'd say go over there. I'm we're, going to as many as I can. We're very focused on it here, and I can tell you, we are very committed. I, I, in spite of what you've seen, fully committed to moving the ball forward. We have conversations daily about what things can be done and what amount of time frame and when. And, 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 and again, yeah. Mayor, I appreciate that. Yeah. If you if you find that the political walls are blocking that, please recognize. Those are more public than there's actually a lot of work happening. It's, it, I understand. I understand what you're saying, but yeah. I'm on the ground in those yeah. fields and I'm watching them not be maintained at a yeah. level that's appropriate yeah. for our kids. Yeah. So, we are, we're, we're on the same page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Okay. So, um, hearing none, I close this portion of the meeting and move to bills and claims. Councilman Hapgood. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move bills and claims in the amount of two million nine hundred and sixty nine thousand thirty one dollars and seventy four cents. May I have a second? Second. Any uh, second by Council Agrippo. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Opposed? Aye. This motion is carried. Finance Policy Committee. Thank you, Mayor. I have eight resolutions, six of which I'd like to move as a package. A resolution authorizing the CFO to draw a warrant to replenish the postage meter, a resolution authorizing the CFO to draw a warrant for unused parking permit fee, a resolution authorizing the CFO to refund recreation department fees, a resolution authorizing the CFO to draw a warrant for dog licenses for February 2020, a resolution authorizing the CFO to draw a warrant for overpaid taxes in 2020, and a resolution authorizing the CFO to draw warrants for 2019 pursuant to Tax Court of New Jersey. We have a second? Second. Second. Senator, my councilman contract, any discussion? All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. The next are resolutions by roll call vote. I'd like to move a resolution to approve temporary emergency appropriations. We have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Boyce. Um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Agrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. I'd also like to move a resolution to approve budget transfers. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilwoman Mackey. Uh, any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. Next is the Code Review and Town Property Committee. Councilman Mackey. I have five resolutions that I would like to move as a package. First, resolution to approve person-to-person -person transfer of liquor license. Second, resolution to approve sidewalk cafe licenses. Third, resolution authorizing and directing the Planning Board to undertake a preliminary investigation of the properties known as Block 2405 Lot 15, Block 2505, Lot 12.01, Block 3001, Lot 5, Block 3101, Lot 5, Block 3103, Lot 7, and Block 3116, Lot 11, to determine whether the properties qualify as non-condemnation areas in need of redevelopment. Fourth, resolution authorizing and directing the Planning Board to undertake a preliminary investigation of the properties known as Block 2502, Lot 14, Block 2506, Lot 1, and Block 2508, Lot 11, to determine whether the properties qualify 
as non-condemnation areas in need of redevelopment, and five, resolution authorizing and directing the planning board to undertake a preliminary investigation of the property known as Block 3107, Lot 1, to determine whether the property qualifies as a non-condemnation area in need of redevelopment. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Hapgood. Um, may I be abstaining from items three, four, and five since they were added on the agenda today? I just want to uh, look further into it before okay. I vote on it. Um, uh, may I second it, you said? Uh, I did. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Right. Yeah, uh, no. This motion Abstained. is carried. That was a no. Right. This motion is carried. I also have several ordinances for introduction this evening. Um, up to you. Sorry. I thought you were going to. I'm sorry. No, it's all you going. Um, the first is General Ordinance Number 2162, an ordinance to amend the land use ordinance of the Town of Westfield regarding ground-mounted air conditioning equipment. I would like to move uh, General Ordinance Number 2162 on first reading. May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Katz. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. Next, I would like to move General Ordinance Number 2163 on first reading, an ordinance to amend the land use ordinance of the Town of Westfield regarding power generators. Uh, may I have a second? Second. Second okay. by Councilman Dardia. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. I would also like to move General Ordinance Number 2164 on first reading, an ordinance to amend the land use ordinance of the Town of Westfield pertaining to permitted yard encroachments. We have a second? Second. Councilman Hapgood, any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. I would like to move General Ordinance Number 2165 on first reading, an ordinance to amend the land use ordinance of the Town of Westfield, revising the submission requirement for preliminary and final site plan and subdivision applications. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Dardia. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. I would like to move General Ordinance Number 2166 on first reading, an ordinance to amend the land use ordinance of the Town of Westfield, listing all zone districts. May I have a second? Second. Second, second, second by Councilman Contract. <laughs> Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Habgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. I would like to move General Ordinance Number 2167 on first reading, an ordinance to amend the land use ordinance of the Town of Westfield regarding notice of hearings. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Katz. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Hapgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. Lastly, I would like to move General <laughs> Ordinance Number 2168 on first reading, an ordinance amending and supplementing the Code of the Town of Westfield, New Jersey, in order to establish the Human Relations Advisory Commission for the Town of Westfield. May I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Contract. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Councilwoman Habgood? Yes. Councilman Parmalee? Yes. Councilman Lagrippo? Yes. Councilman Katz? Yes. Councilwoman Mackey? Yes. Councilman Contract? Yes. Councilman Dardia? Yes. Councilman Boys? Yes. Mayor Brindle? Yes. This motion is carried. 
Councilman Contract, please move Public Works Committee resolutions. Sure, I have two resolutions to move as a package. The first is a resolution to award a contract for various landscape material for the Department of Public Works. That's our spring planting of trees. And the second is a resolution authorizing change order number one for the 2019 ADA com uh, compliant curb ramps. May I have a second? Second. Second by Council Agrippo. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion is carried. Any other reports from department heads? They are accepted, so may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Councilman Mackey, second? Second. Second by Councilman Contract, all in favor? Yes. yes. Motion is carried, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.